whole scenic motorboat tour. Our the second will turn around and head back up that way, which is upstream. I'm sure, uh, I'm assuming all you folks are from around this area, but if not, you probably know the Snake River goes from east to west across the Snake River Plain. Yeah, it's a fascinating river and over a thousand miles from its journeys upstream in Yellowstone National Park and the headwater sits right on the Continental Divide. You know, part of that water goes the other way. I don't know if you've been to Yellowstone Park, but over the beautiful falls of the Yellowstone River and in the Missouri and Mississippi and Gulf of Mexico. And the other part of the lake falls this way down past the Tetons, past Jackson Hole. And a couple hundred miles upstream it joins its famous cousin, the Henry's Fork, and basically cuts a giant swath across the Snake River Plain from the Wyoming to the Oregon border, a couple hundred miles farther down that way. And then it turns due north and digs the deepest canyon in North America <laughs> through Hell's Canyon, like almost four times deeper than the Grand Canyon. But they it's don't want you to know that. that. Its sister river joins it down there, the Salmon, and we actually live in Riggins, too, and operate in Riggins on the Salmon. We're outfitters on about 400 miles of the Snake and Salmon for rafting's our main business. We do kayaking, canoeing, some jet boating and fishing, and then we do a scenic motorboat. This is actually the only one we do right here that uses a non-aluminum boat and stuff. But Five major hydroelectric projects and diversions, what the state calls a working river. Unlike the salmon that we operate on, it's the longest free flowing river in one state in the country. It has no dams and it drains the largest wilderness in the lower 48, so the water quality is impeccable. I mean, the snake's good, especially when you get farther downstream, but upstream about 40 miles, they actually divert the whole flow of the Snake River out of the river channel into these canals. And it all started right here a little over 100 years ago. An old boy by the name of I.B. Prine found himself coming down the Indian Trail on this north side of the canyon. And according to his journals, set up camp and threw his fishing line out and pulled in a 20-pound Chinook salmon and roasted it over the fire that night. And so a couple days went by, a week. Next thing you know, he ended up homesteaded in this whole bar, or what they call a bar at the time. But made a beautiful ranch and orchard out of it known as the Blue Lakes Ranch and later his family sold it off and it became you know one of the more exclusive country clubs in the area. The Blue Lakes Country Club and I'm sure you probably know there's another golf course over on this side. I'd love to take you guys down farther but you can see it's super rocky and gnarly. Oh yeah, yeah the it only way like to, really yeah. rough water. Thanks. The only way to go down farther is if we have a canoe or kayak Come and, on. and there's no water in the river. I mentioned to you, Prine actually thought he was a pretty smart guy about 40 miles upstream, if you guys have been up to Milner Dam or Milner Ruts, it's a national historic site. It's a crossing, one of the last crossings on the Snake River where you could get across, you know, before you got to this deep canyon. And Brian thought, geez, if I could get the water out here, it's so steep. I mean, waterfalls, you know, up higher than Niagara. We run these rapids upstream called the Murtaugh section between here and Burley. It's the biggest rapids on the Snake River. Bigger than Hell's Canyon, but no one knows about it because there's never hardly any water in the river to do it. Look at right there, downstream about like 400 miles or so. So he figured, gosh, if I could get the water out of the river and build canals, I could get it racing downstream for like 50 or 60 miles in each direction. Thank you. So and that was in 1896 or 97. And of course, floating that idea around in the late 1800s, everyone thought, great, I'd be, what a great idea, but yeah, you're going to divert the whole Snake River into the desert, Bill yeah. Kennedy, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it took him a couple years, but he got hooked up with some good main men with money, like his first his first main man, Frank Buell, the Pittsburgh Steel Millionaire, and Buell had a past partner from some other endeavors, Peter Kimberly, this guy from Chicago, a physician and surgeon, and they had some local boys well connected, the Kuhn brothers, Drome and Wendell, I don't know if you've heard of them, and their other good friend of theirs, well connected guy's parents had a lot of money, Frank Gooding. <laughs> a little bit later Frank on, he, he went on to be governor, Frank Gooding, and then senator, Love Frank that. Gooding. Hey. So those all guys were the original investors in what they called the Twin Falls Land and Water Company. That best, actually got best, that. That's so, the town's named after him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. and actually, the town's named after the falls up there, Twin Falls. I don't know if you've been No, I mean the so, surrounding town. Oh, yeah. 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 If you had enough money, then you got your own town. Yeah. Be careful. Hmm. He's the I can appreciate that. <laughs> they didn't get no stick They didn't get a town. They got a yeah, street. Previous to that, you know, the Oregon and California Kelton trails run along both sides of the canyon. Actually, about 100 yards up right on that pit point, and it's marked. You can still see the ruts from the Oregon Trail into the mud and lava and stuff. Really?